Hi guys, in this video, I'm going to talk about simple or baseline forecasting methods. So these are very simple uh, forecasting methods that can be used as a baseline to compare to more advanced forecasting methods, such as regression, ARIMA, state-space models, etc. So the first one is called naive forecasting. And what it does is just forecast the next time step to be the previous time step. So y hat at the end of our data, yeah? So if our time goes from one till big T, then the value at big T plus one, capital T plus one is just the value of capital T. So the last value we've seen in our data, in our observed data. But this also implies that even the forecast for H time steps ahead will also be the same value as the last time step in our data because yt plus one will be yt, and then yt plus two will be yt plus one, which is yt, et cetera, et cetera. So the hidden assumption here is that while we do expect changes, we expect them to be gradual. So we don't expect such drastic changes in the y value from one time step to the other. So if we want to say what will be the next time step value, so a pretty decent forecast will be the last time step value. So here we have some data taken from the book Forecasting Principles and Practice, uh, third edition. And we see we have this data. And then this is the last, where this blue point over here, it's the last uh, data point that we had. And so we just forecast the same uh, for all the next time steps. Now, the underlying math model of this entire thing can be written as yt, the current value, is equal to yt minus 1, the previous value, plus some white noise. And this is also known as a random walk. OK, so this is one baseline method. Another baseline method will be mean forecasting. So the next time step, we will forecast it to be the mean of all the previous time steps. OK, so, so y hat at capital T plus 1 will be equal to the sum of all the previous yt uh, divided by t, or the average of all the other uh, values. Notice that this also implies that the forecast for t plus h, so h time steps ahead, whatever h will be, will be the same as t plus 1, because uh, we will add, if you add the average uh, to your series, the average stays the same. OK, so what is the hidden assumption in this model? Um, I think that the hidden assumption here is that while there might be fluctuations, we don't expect that there will be any trend in the data. So we expect that more or less there's like a constant uh, level and might be there might be fluctuations around it, but overall it stays the same. And so the underlying math model can be written as the value at time t is equal to some constant plus some noise. So this is another baseline method. A uh, third one is called drift forecasting. And what we do here is we draw a line from the first observation to the last observation, and we just continue that line. OK, so it's just simple math. You take the slope uh, by calculating uh, the value at time t minus the value at times 1 divided by the distance between them, which is just t minus 1. And then uh, you get this line equation. You can simplify it and go. Uh, to this equation over here. And the hidden assumption here for this kind of model is that the trend is very distinct. And so even if there are some fluctuations, they are not too big to disturb this model, at least in the short-term forecasting. Yeah, So maybe we won't get the exact m, the exact slope. We'll get something a little bit uh, more or less. But, but for short-term forecasting, it will be enough if the trend is very distinct. And the underlying math model for this uh, forecasting is that the current value is equal to some constant plus the previous value plus some noise. And this is also known as random walk with a drift. And actually, we could also write this as yt minus yt minus 1 is equal to c plus epsilon t. OK, and what it means, it means that if we difference the series, if we take the series of differences, we take y2 minus y1, y3 minus y2, we create a new series. Then this series should behave like this model over here. OK, the fourth and last baseline forecasting is called seasonal naive. And basically, it's like naive, but for seasonal data. So we will give each future observation the last known seasonal 
uh, value that it had. So in this data, you can see the data here is quarterly. So we have the last four points. This was quarter one, this was quarter two, this was quarter three, this was quarter four, and we simply continue this. So because this is naive, we are in quarter one again, we predict the last quarter. Uh, we are in quarter two, we predict the last second quarter. And this is just some uh, math way of explaining this, but it's very simple. Okay, and the underlying math model here is that the current value is equal to the last known value uh, plus some white noise. Okay, if we switch into R, I can generate some data, which looks like this. And we have some, I just coded the different baseline forecasting. So we have the naive method, which simply returns the last um, value. We have the mean method, which gives the mean of the previous values. We have the drift method, which calculates this um, line, uh, the slope of the line, and gives uh, the value on that line. And we have the seasonal, which gives the last known seasonal value. Okay, So we can now use all of these methods on this data that I generated, and we can plot it. Okay, and we can see here, yeah, so the red is the naive, the green is the mean, the blue is the drift. Yeah, if you take the line from here to here, it's it's a one straight line. And this white blue cyan is the seasonality. Notice uh, there's a seasonality of seven. So there's seven, uh, I just hard coded it here. Yeah, I just took that the data has the seasonal components of seven. Okay, and the more modern way of doing this is we load the FPP3 library is casting the data as a Siebel. And because I want to forecast 50 days, I just use this as a time uh, index. And if I take 50 days before the end of the year, it, it turns out to, it's this date. So we take this as the train, we feed all the different models. So we cast the train data into a model object and we specify which models we want to use. We want to use the naive method. We want to use the mean method. We want to use the drift method. For this, we specify naive and we set a drift. And then we also want a seasonal naive. And for this, we just say seasonal naive. We then forecast the data for 50 days. And then we can auto plot, use auto plot and plot the data. It looks like this. You can see the colors are different, but it's exactly the same. This is the naive method, uh, this is the mean, this is the drift, and this is the seasonal naive, and we get exactly the same results. Okay, so this was all for this video. I hope you enjoyed and see you in the next one.